Hi, my name is Julian Garcia, and today I'm going to be demonstrating a knee x-ray. Um, we're going to be doing five images. The first one's going to be an AP, second is going to be a medial lateral oblique, third is going to be a lateral, and then our fourth, we're doing an intercondylar fossa, fossa, excuse me, and then the fifth is going to be a patellosatagus method, um, and it's going to be a tangential projection. All right. So first I'm going to get my room ready. I have an IR already placed in. We're doing a 10 by 12. It's in the bucky. And we're going to go ahead and be tented and make sure that my SID is at 40. Um, I moved it back so that the patient doesn't hurt themselves. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead into the waiting room and call my patient. Kyle Manis? Yes. How are we doing today? Very well. Fantastic. Um, if you could just go ahead and verify your last name and your date of birth. Yeah. It's uh, Manis, M-A-N-E-S-S. Okay, and do you know why you're coming in with me today? I was hiking and I fell down and hurt my knees. Okay, sorry to hear that. Um, is there any chance that you could possibly be pregnant? Fantastic. Okay. Take him into the waiting um, from the waiting room into the exam room. Now, normally I would go ahead and lower the table all the way down, but unfortunately this table doesn't have that maneuverability. So I'm going to provide him with a step stool. If you could just go ahead and place your head at the end of the table with your on your back, stomach side up. Place him in a supine position. Relax. I'm going to provide him with some shielding. And then I'm going to get started. AP, I'm going to ask that you dorsiflex your foot to make sure that the foot is as flat as possible. You're going to make sure that the crosshairs go down to about a half inch below the patellar apex. I'm going to mark him in the uh, field, in the light field, and then I'm going to make it anatomically correct position by putting it on the lateral side. Um, and then I'm going to go back here into my exposure room. I'm going to set the technique to a 65 at 8, and then I'm going to take the exposure. After I've done taking the exposure, I'm going to come back into the room. I'm going to remove the IR. I'm going to have it run and red, placing a new 10 by 12 in so we can get the new lateral oblique image in. All right. So now with this view, I'm going to go ahead and use his malleoli to guide me um, in turning his foot medially to a 45 degree angle. I'm going to have him dorsiflex his foot as much as possible without hurting him as well. And then I'm going to call it turning the light on. I'm going to be moving the patient a little bit, um, ever so slightly, making sure that the crosshairs are about a half inch below the patellar apex. And then I'm going to step out into the room. I'm going to take my exposure. I'm going to keep the same technique of 65 by 8. Then once I'm done with that exposure, I'm going to remove the film, have it run, place in a new film, put it back in. Um, so the next image we're doing is a lateral. So with this image, I'm going to actually have the patient turn onto his affected side, which is going to be the right side in this case. Thank you so much. I'm going to have his left leg over his right knee. Um, I'm going to have his uh, foot at a, or I'm going to have his knee at a 30 degree angle. I'm going to have him dorsiflex his foot as well to make sure that his foot is flat as possible. I'm going to reshield him appropriately. I'm going to put the light on. I'm going to move him down. And for this image, um, I'm going to make sure that the central ray enters uh, his medial epicondyles perpendicular. I'm going to find my marker that I had. Oh, there it is. And then I'm going to place it in the light field as well. I'm going to step out. Um, into the protective leg blind room, and I'm going to make the exposure, keeping it the same technique of 65 at 8. Exposure's done. I'm going to go back into the room. I'm going to remove the IR, have it ready. Take my marker somewhere and find it. Grab a shielding. And then I'm going to have him turn supine again. Now we should turn onto the back. Thank you so much. So for this one, I'm actually. 
actually going to prop up his knee at a 60 degree, uh, prop up his knee with his femur at a 60 degree angle. I'm going to take another 10 by 12 cassette. I'm going to place it underneath. Thank you very much. And this time I'm going to And then I'm going to make sure that the x-ray, or I'm sorry, the central ray is going to be coming in a half inch below the patella apex as well. I'm going to place my marker in the light field. I'm going to make sure that he's shielded again. And then I'm going to go back into my room. I'm going to keep, no, I'm going to change my technique this time. I'm going to keep it at a 65 out of 4 since we're doing a free cassette. I'm going to take my exposure. After I'm done with that, I'm going to take a marker, move my film, run my film, remove the pillow, and employ my patient's help. I'm going to have him uh, hold with his right hand um, the IR, and then I'm going to place my right marker. So for this one, I basically want to have the central ray entering at the fibrillar patella joint, um, and I want to make sure that I could see the actual kneecap in the light. My marker fell, but I can't gracefully it. Um, let's see. Yep, markers in, crosshairs are in. I'm gonna, my technique is going to be the same since it's a freestanding cassette, 65 out 4. I'm going to take the exposure. Once I'm done, I'm going to take the film. Thank you so much for your help. Grab my marker, run the film, make sure that the image came out well, move the lead apron. and then get it back to their physician and then the physician will be in contact with them. And that is my 5D view x-ray. <laughs>